the things we're going to touch on is starting to, we're going to start to explain how a DML works, what it is, what are the components, uh, the theory behind it, and then how that theory actually evolves into a functional product. Um, so Tim, why don't you hit the whiteboard yep. and uh, kind of start uh, drawing up a few of the main um, uh, awesome. components uh, of a DML and some of the theory behind it. Okay. And then I'll interject at any given time, I think, with what are seminal questions. Because my background being conventional, uh, I've always kind of assumed um, the functionality in, uh, of each of the components that you see inside of a DML. But actually, how it works is quite different. Yeah, and we're, we're not changing any of the rules of acoustics. We're just bringing an object that still behaves according to the laws of physics. It's just something new. It's a new way, a novel way of creating sound. Um, well, uh, when, I, when we started designing transducers in, in, in my career, it was always that you were always trying to eliminate modes. Yep, resonances. Yep. We're trying to eliminate resonances. Yep. Uh, typically in a transducer, second harmonic resonances are those created by the actual movement of the cone and the assembly. Mm -hmm. um, usually those you can live with, but those resonances will actually be part of other modes that you'll find in a loudspeaker, and those are odd harmonics, and mm -hmm. third harmonic, fifth harmonic, seventh harmonic. And these are actually quite, um, 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 uh, let's say, uh, annoying is a good word, mm -hmm. but um, undesirable is probably the best word, sure. uh, because they're, they create a, a tone that's not originally there in the original signal. Yeah. Um, when looking at DMLs, it's basically, you're trying to do the opposite. Yep. You're basically trying to get the, the surface area or the diaphragm to you know, identify where the, the, what the modal properties are of that material. And you actually get energy and, and uh, audio out of the panel yep. by exciting those modes, which is upside down. It's, it's scary. I, I, <laughs> I know. Um, I guess you know, one thing to always remember with, with a conventional you know, piston type drive unit, it operates as a resonant object. It, 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 it has a fundamental resonance. Yes. Um, you know, the next resonance is normally the, the first breakup mode. Um, and that's what often constrains the bandwidth of, uh, of a conventional cone. Uh, there are other things to do with the, the, the power beaming and the size, but often it's that, that breakup mode. And of course, that's what scares people because it doesn't sound very nice. You know, it's uncontrolled generally. Um, it's, it's large amplitude and it uh, doesn't sound so good. So. You know, we understand um, resonances have kind of been uh, something to be, to be avoided traditionally. Um, but, you know, the DML requires you know, a little bit of a shift in thinking, mm -hmm. and then it starts to kind of make sense. Um, so, so what I found, why don't we grab the, the motor, the driver over there. <laughs> what I found that the basic elements of a DML starts with uh, what is referred to you or by the DML or the NXT folks who invented the technology as an exciter. Mm -hmm. But in my world, it's basically a magnetic structure with a standard uh, uh, voice coil and a standard spider design. Um, and same rules apply. Yeah, it, it's an electrodynamic transducer. Yep. Um, the only difference is it's not, it doesn't have a cone attached to it and a basket mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, so. You know, there are some aspects, you know, often the DMLs are designed to be very, very wide bandwidth. So you have to often make design choices to ensure that you, you don't restrict that bandwidth in the motor. So for example, in, in, in this motor here, we have a, a copper shield over the pole piece. Mm -hmm. And that, that shield um, pr uh, reduces the high frequency roll off, the losses caused by um, sure. eddy current magnetic interaction. Um, so that, you know, that's one of the features, and it, you know, it's found in conventional motors as well, um, perhaps a little bit less so, and it's used more often in, in Typically, in you'll find that in compression drivers, mm -hmm. a copper shorting ring, uh, shorting the gap, trying to control eddy currents and other yeah. uh, anomalies that you will find in a standard uh, structure. Sure. But more typically found to control the high end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And same here, but it's yeah. So, but uh, essentially, the, the core components are the same. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see here we have a spider. As, as before, you see the magnet structure, and we have something we call the uh, the coupler ring. 
and that, that is used to help us um, gain a, a nice secure adhesion to the panel surface because we have to connect the, the voice coil former to the panel and this is a way of giving us some, you know, some really good, good strong bonds. Mm -hmm.